Hey everybody, Andy from Tennis Euphoria bringing you a review of the Diadem V3 Elevate racket, the 305 gram version. Who are Diadem? Uh, they are a US um, based manufacturer of um, racket sport related products, uh, big in pickleball, um, I understand. And with regards to tennis, they have um, two main racket lines, uh, the Elevate, which is a control orientated line, and the Nova, which is more of a tweener line. I understand they also make balls and strings, and I plan to review them all, which is um, great. The Elevate that I tested was the V3 98 square inch uh, 305 gram model. It's got a 16 by 20 string pattern, 21.5 millimeter beam. So we very much have a uh, control orientated kind of player's frame. In terms of quality control, uh, always interested to test that with smaller manufacturers. Uh, mine was overweight a bit. Um, at 310 grams pretty much that gave me a strong swing weight of 320 I elected to put a quality string in the frame um, I went with head hawk power it was between that um, and Lux and Alu power to test this out because ultimately this frame is sitting in that sort of players category it's obviously looking to compete with the Wilson blade so I wanted to give it you know a fair test and put a good string in it uh, on note of stringing you've got an interesting um, double grommet miss down at the bottom when you're stringing so stringers beware um, so why did I want to test this frame well generally I uh, make it my mission to have hit with and understood all rackets from all manufacturers I'm totally independent of, of all of them and when it comes to delivering my uh, racket consultancy and custom match um, hitting and analysis services then it's really important that I have a a good understanding of everything that's out there in order to make um, good recommendations to identify categories and then make good recommendations for shortlists of hitting later down that process. Um, in terms of this category then, so 98 uh, square inches, 305 grams, unstrung, thinnish beam. Um, so we're very much in the uh, blade category, other rackets that this would compete with would be the Dunlop CX200. You'd also be looking at the Technofiber, um, I suppose TF40 305 as a co competitor to this. You've got some strong frames out there. Um, the difference with this one is that 16 by 20 pattern, even though at um, you know center of the racket and contact point, the spacing um, on that isn't too different to what you'd be finding in the 16 by 19 patterns in those other Others. Um, a quick note on the, the racket itself, I have to say the paint job was um, fantastic. Um, it did chip um, pretty quickly in one area, but it does have this lovely kind of rubbery feel um, to the paint job. A little bit like you got on the Onyx V cores of a couple of iterations ago, and I must admit I really like that. I think it looks great, not that that particularly matters, and paired with Headhawk Plower, that blue, um, it looks fantastic. So how does this play? I suppose uh, in terms of how it feels, I always like to start there. It has um, a feeling that is actually quite blade-like. So I always describe uh, the Blade V8 as having a really nice combination of um, stability um, and solidity with um, sort of plushness and connection to the ball. And this diadem actually has the same. Um, it's um, solid from the back of the court. It hits a lovely slice. Um, it's actually nice and stable. Um, despite that swing weight being a little bit lower than I would like, I was thinking it had plenty of power for this type of category. So that's all great. Hit a lovely slice. Um, be good for people with one-handed backhands as I tried to badly demonstrate there. I also felt that you could generate um, you know, a nice lot of power and hit your spots when it came to serving. So generally from the back of the court, you know, not a lot to um, uh, really be disappointed with at all. Um, it sort of scores very well. Um, so to give it some balance, um, you know, here's some of the challenges with this frame. 
actually think that it isn't um, the most forgiving. Now, of course, that category of racket is not going to be the most forgiving. Um, you know, advanced players should be the people who are um, considering playing with this frame. I actually think that the more advanced you are, the better that you're going to get on with this frame. And the reason that I say that is that the um, I think the forgiveness and the sweet spot is actually at the um, a sort of more challenging end than you'd find in the Technofiber, Dunlop CX200 and the Blade. So I actually think this is a little bit harder to use. And that was quite noticeable for me if I played points between this and other frames that I'm just generally tending to hit with. Um, it would be a case of you know perfect movement, perfect positioning, perfect connection, fantastic. You can literally pinpoint accuracy where you want the ball to go. The minute that you're just a touch off, then you notice uh, the forgiveness isn't quite there. And I actually think you would get more forgiveness out of those other three frames. Um, in terms of um, other aspects, so it's it's probably a good platform. Uh, so I think again for your very advanced player, if someone's looking to take that swing weight up a little bit, you know they do particularly well with that. Mine was obviously a little bit overweight, which um, meant that I didn't feel the need to customize this at all. I think the frame would be paired well with quality strings. Um, the launch angle is actually, um, I would say. Um, pretty pretty comparable actually to to what you'd get with the blade. So some players will want to open up uh, that launch angle a little bit with you know maybe a spin orientated poly, um, but I actually think you know go with a quality poly that offers good control characteristics, and then you've got a um, racket that if you have the ability can really reward you. Um, so certainly one that I think has a real place in the category. It is, um, you know, worthy competition um, of the blade. I think you've got a little bit more punch on it compared to the CX200. Um, and next to the Technofiber TF40 305, that would be a you know close call to compare. Um, it's going to be subjective, I think. You know, if someone was to hit all four of those between them, um, you know, some would go for this, some would go for others. But actually, I think, um, as I say, the more advanced that you are, the more you're going to get out of this frame. So um, I wouldn't be recommending it to your, your intermediate um, or even your sort of low level advanced players. Um, the Nova will come up soon. I'm also going to have a look at the Percept lines and I've got a um, demo of the Pro Staff X. All of those should be up live on the channel soon. Thanks for watching. Really helpful if you subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and you obviously then get to see when the next reviews go up. Uh, if you're interested in that custom matching service, it's something that I've um, uh, developed over the last few years. It combines all of my knowledge of um, um, function and movement from a body perspective, um, strength movement assessments to um, help to understand what power and what forgiveness you need from a racket. It then also looks at analyzing um, technique, game style, all sorts of things that doesn't really happen in processes out there to help you understand the category of racket that you need. And then we go through a high level um, hitting stages of um, demoing some rackets um, to see what you perform best with, which helps you take all of that sort of guesswork out of what racket's right for you and um, arrive at some good decisions around your right racket purchase. Uh, if that is of interest, then get onto um, the Tennis Euphoria website and get in touch. Um, the website or my phone number is on there and you can book that in. Uh, thanks for watching. It'd be really helpful if you could like the video and see you in the next one.